welcome back to Twisted Stitches. My name is Tammy. How's everybody doing on this wonderful Tuesday morning? So today is Tuesday, which means Tuesday Talks. And I think we're going to shorten this. You know, I'm one of those people who likes to throw in stuff just to be a little bit different, a little bit odd, a lot bit odd, whatever. So I think we're going to get rid of the tips, tricks, and tutorials. We're just going to call it Tuesday Talks and... If it's a tutorial, I'll say today is a tutorial or a tip or something. So today I have a sort of a tip for you. Well, it is a tip. And thank you to my beautiful friends who reminded me, duh, I could put this on today's video as a tip. It was something that we were discussing and I didn't even think about it. It just didn't hit my mind until one of my friends said, uh, Tammy, you could use that on your Tuesday's videos. And I went, I could have had a V8 too, couldn't I? So anyway, I did write down some notes because uh, what had happened is, well, before I get into today's uh, topic, which we will, this, I'm gonna touch on something super quick, super short, two different things. Number one, on my Knit Crate Sock Crate unboxing, in my, I can't redo the video, um, but I did mention a code that I was going to be putting in my description box that at that time when I put that code in, according to Knitcrate, was supposed to offer my friends, friends and family, a Knitcrate box first month, first month subscription for $5. So I placed it into my description box, also stating that you know, not only would you get your first month for $5, but I get something in return. I think I get uh, either money off or something like that for using that code that I put in there. Well, one of my friends tried to use it. And when they went to check out, instead of getting their box for $5, it was only offering 50% off, which still in itself is a still a good deal. You know, you're, you're getting it for half the price of a normal box. But it wasn't what I had said in the video. I don't know when Knit Crate changed it, that I wasn't informed. So because of this, I'm going to remove that code so it can no longer be used. So if you know of someone else who has money off or does have the code for a $5 for the first month, um, then go to them and use it. That's what I would say. So anyway, that was uh, the first thing I wanted to mention today real quick because I forgot to mention it. Not this Friday, but the Friday before, and I totally forgot, slipped my mind. And then I forgot to mention it this Friday, slipped my mind. So I made sure I mentioned it today. Uh, the second thing, today is July 14th. So that means at midnight or 12.01 a.m. Eastern time, my time, I am closing the Christmas in July fairies for comments, which means I am going to be picking my winner tomorrow and my winner video will be uploaded tomorrow, probably uh, very early evening, late afternoon, very early evening. Hold on, my dogs are barking. I must go see what's going on. Be right back. Sorry about that. I don't know. As soon as I go and turn on to film, my dogs decide to start barking. This is the third time, well, the third video that they've pulling this and I'm not really sure why. And I go and check and nobody's here and nothing's going on. They just want to annoy me. <laughs> I don't know why. Even if I let them in here, then they bark in here. So I've, I've tried several different things. I even gave them a bone and a treat and it's not working. They're still barking. So sorry about the interruption. Uh, back to Christmas in July fairies. Um, like I said, 12.01 a.m. Closing comments or no more comments. I will put closed on the video. That was just a quick couple little things I want to touch on. So back to today's Tuesday tips. Sorry about that. I just wanted to throw that in there. On Friday with my normal podcast, I was stating how I'm going to be using that cashmere, Dolce, Dolce cashmere, I think it's called, yarn. But um, I had tried to Febreze it, uh, light Febreze and put it out into the outside to just air out. Um, I had stated how, where I had gotten it from one of those Facebook market selling places that obviously the person was a smoker or somebody smoked in the household and it had an odor of like, it has an odor of stale old smoke, you know, cigarette smoke. And I was trying to get rid of it. 
I don't have a yarn swift and I was trying to wrap, you know, uncake it and wrap it around like a chair, but it kept getting messy and tangling on me and I was losing yarn and cause I was going to hank it up, wash it, let it dry, cake it and then use it. And that would have totally sol solved the problem. But, um, I was having difficulty with that and I wanted to keep it in cake form. So I had two suggestions on Friday. One was from Zoe, who is the uh, owner of Felicity Yarn Studio and Felicity Yarn Studio podcast here on YouTube, where I bought that um, gothic heroine and the um, millennial pink uh, colorway that I showed on Friday. And uh, she said that she heard and was told about putting the yarn in a, like a Ziploc, you know, baggy type thing and placing it in the freezer. Now it didn't give a specific time or anything like that. So that was one tip. And another tip I'd gotten was from uh, Denise Hoffman, who stated that she will put some baking soda into a, you know, say Tupperware. I I'm using name brands because my mind can't think of you know, an airtight container, put the yarn in there, you know, get the, the baking soda kind of dusted through the yarn and then let it sit for about a week or so. And that helps remove odors. And it was, I never thought of baking soda. I'm like, I use baking soda in my freezer and in my refrigerator to help eliminate odors. I put baking soda in other places, you know, for odor purposes. I use baking soda for a lot of things, for cleaning and everything. It's all natural. It's not harmful to pets or children. And it does a wonderful job on many, many, many things. So I always have boxes of baking soda in my house. One is for cleaning and one is for uh, baking only. So anyway, so in, so when I, when I read those, I was like, you know what? I never even thought about doing anything. So I Googled, I also Googled how to remove smells from yarns, you know, stinky yarn basically. And one of the first, the first thing that came up in the Google algorithm was a blog called Creative Bug. And I'll leave the link in my description box because that's where I originally got the initial information. This is the information I'm speaking to you of today. So um, on their site, of course, they say to wash it, which that was my first option. I wanted to wash it, have it clean, start out clean. Uh, another option, of course, is another thing I am going to do, whether this, my test works or not, I'm going to crochet up my shawl and then of course wash it. And at that point we should be all good. There should be no problems. I just have to deal with the fact that maybe my yarn will be a little stinky. So one of the things they suggested, now these are some really, some of it was far-fetched stuff that I don't see anybody doing or wanting to do for that matter, but I'm going to tell you a couple of the things that they put on their blog. Uh, they said sunlight and grass. So they said unravel your yarn and place it out in your yard and leave it out there. What did they say for two days? Yeah, up to two days, maybe pinning it in some places so it doesn't like blow around or something. And I guess the combination of the chlorophyll in the grass and the sunlight removes odors from yarn. Now, number one, here in Florida, no, that's not going to happen. There's too many times that like right now it's beautiful, sunshiny, and in 30 minutes it could be downpouring. So I'm not going to go through all that to have to maybe run out there and whatever and do it. Secondly, excuse me, sorry, I am not going to let my yarn sit in sunlight, especially Florida sun that naturally bleaches everything. I would just kind of assume that especially, or maybe a natural fiber wool yarn would possibly bleach out from the sun, just like everything else, you know, that, so that's a no. I was kind of like, wow, that's a odd thing, but it, it was there. Uh, number two, sunlight and vinegar, which basically dunking your unraveled yarn, what did it say? Unraveling your yarn and ha have it doused in vinegar and putting it in the sun for one to two days. Uh, same situation. No, I'm not going to leave it out in my yard. Number two, I would maybe assume that possibly vinegar could also enhance, 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 
enhance the bleaching effect. So, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, activated charcoal. That's a good idea. So they say to basically, you know, use powder fine charcoal, but put it in like a stocking or, you know, like a sachet type thing. And then putting that activated charcoal in a sealed container with your yarn. But the catch is, it, say, it states in there, leave it in the container for seven days. And then if you open it and it still has an odor, close it up and leave it in there for a few more days. And then if it still has an odor, try something else. And I thought, well, that tip sounds like a lot of people tried activated charcoal and it just really didn't work. And I'm not really sure why they would even put that in their blog site where it just sounds like you're going to be waiting two weeks and you still might not get results. So that's a, I'm not doing that. So, uh, another tip they had was baking soda. So baking soda, um, putting in a container and leaving it for approximately a week. And if not working, leave it for a few more days. Uh, some other things that they said is basically the same using kitty litter. That's a good idea. Kitty litter does help remove well, it would remove moisture. Maybe it would remove odors. Not sure, but they say kitty litter. Uh, essential oils. You could either put oils on your yarn itself, um, which I wouldn't do because I don't want my yarn getting saturated with anything um, unless it's unraveled and I'm washing it, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but they said also you could like saturate a couple cotton balls with essential oils and set it in a container with the yarn in there. But I would just think that if you did that, that's all it's going to do is like when I Febrezed my yarn, at that moment it smelt good because the Febreze smelled good on it. But as soon as that dissipated, the smell of the smoke came through. I'm actually trying to kind of eliminate the odor, not just mask the odor. But I would assume that essential oils, you know, if you're going to work with it right away and you just want it to smell a little bit better until you're done with your project, that might be a good idea. Um... A piece of mint chewing gum in a container, seal container with your yarn, will also add like a minty smell. They were showing like Wrigley Spearmint gum, which I've had Wrigley Spearmint gum in my purse, open my purse, and my purse smells really good at that moment. So I would assume that would at least give it mask, uh, mask the smell for a little bit. Using a dryer sheet, putting your yarn into a hank, um, I, I would just assume that this is for yarn that can be safely placed into a dryer on low setting, hanking up your yarn and putting a couple of dryer sheets in there and letting it tumble on low or on the air cycle, you know, and to help remove the odor. So yeah, I get that. Uh, let's see, what else did it say? Uh, oh, and of course, and like I said, working the yarn and then uh, working up the yarn and then washing the item, which is what I plan on doing. Or you could throw it out. No, I'm not throwing out my yarn. Maybe if it was just some like super saver or something, possibly. So some of these tips are for also if you buy yarn and it has like maybe a factory smell and it's a very strong factory smell, some people get headaches or it triggers migraines and gets nauseous from that strong factory smell odor and I think we've all had that we all know what that smell is so maybe those tips or tricks could help you guys if it's just as simple as there's some factory smell and you need to get that out or you need to you know help mask it until you can wash it or something like that so uh what did I do I decided to do three I had three cakes that I figured I would do an ex experiment with and I did three controls so my first cake I placed in a Ziploc bag and sealed it and placed it all by itself in the freezer the second cake I put baking soda approximately a quarter cup of baking soda I put the yarn inside the Ziploc shook it around and I left it on the kitchen table um, basically overnight it's been almost 24 hours now and then the third one, I decided to combine the two. I put approximately a quarter cup of baking soda, shook it around, and then placed that in the freezer. So I'll be back in just a second, and I'm, I wanted to keep everything the way it was until right as I'm ready to test it out for you guys here and now. I wish I had smell-o-vision for you guys so you can smell for yourself, but I'll be right back. So are we ready for the smell-o-reveals? Smell-reveals? Reveals? Okay, this one here, 
I don't know if you could read that. It says baking soda without freezer. The S with a little line over it is nursing shorthand for without. With for, uh, just so you know, if you ever want to know, is a C with a line over it, meaning with. I don't know. I don't know why it was like that. I just know. <laughs> so baking soda without being frozen. This was just placed on the table. These have been brewing for 23 hours. So not a week. I didn't have a week to test that out, but this should give us an idea anyway. This particular one was freezer only. Nothing else in it. And then this one here is freezer with the baking soda. So nothing is stuck to it or anything. Uh, I think I'm going to start with, because it says it takes seven days or more, I'm going to test out the just baking soda in a bag without any other control. Just baking soda sitting on normal normal temperature, like 76 degrees in the house type thing. Um, I will take this outside and pound it out and stuff because I have baking soda everywhere, but baking soda is not harmful. So, no, I can still smell it. If I come up with white all over my nose, you know what it's from. <laughs> It's less, okay? It is a tad less. So this might, after a week, work. I don't know. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to leave this in this bag because I shouldn't need to use this cake uh, while I'm working on the Sis Love Crochet Along. So I'm going to give this a week. And next Tuesday, I will blurb it back in and let you know if after a week, if it did anything, if it worked, like really pulled all the odors out. I got baking soda in my nose. I'm not snorting baking soda, I swear to God. Okay, so the next control I'm really curious about is the one that Zoe talked about. I couldn't find anything on freezer. Or I did, and I, it didn't state like how long you should leave it in the freezer for. Um, so let's see if the freezer trick worked. It'd be really great if it did. This actually was the one I was starting to try to hank up and I was just making a mess and I ended up cutting a whole bunch of this off, so. Oh! That one? Oh! Yeah, that! Really? Took a lot. Oh, wow. Way more in 23 hours. Wow. That really did help. That's a huge difference. That is a huge difference from p plain baking soda in a Ziploc. Just, there's a little bit way in the middle. But it smells... Smell, you ever open up in a grocery store, you open it up like the popsicle aisle and get that burst of cool, uh, clean freezer air come at you? That's what I'm smelling. <sighs> Smells like freezer air. <laughs> I like that smell. Feels good. Ah, this kind of worked. I might throw this back in the freezer because, I mean, ever so slight. And I have a real sensitive sniffer. Like, odors bother me big big, big time. Like, I don't think anybody else would barely smell these, but I can smell them like if they were sitting on my kitchen table and I could smell it emanating over into the living room or on the dining room table and I could smell it emanating over to the, I could smell it. I'm just one of those people. Okay, so now I'm kind of excited about baking soda and freezer. This was my own concoction. So let's see if this worked better than the other two. And then we will know what is the best way. And nothing got wet. Like the, the baking soda didn't get wet. It's still powdery. So as long as I guess it's in a Ziploc or a sealed container, I don't think you'd have that problem with dampness on it or anything. Oh, wow. I'm sniffing baking soda. <laughs> 
I don't smell any odor at all. I can't take a huge snort because I don't want to snort baking soda, but I don't even, and this one's a full cake. I didn't pull anything out. So I'm going into the middle. I don't even smell freezer smell like on the other one, how you could smell that freezer smell. And this I just took out of the freezer. Ta-da! Okay. So I think winner, winner, chicken dinner, everybody. I think placing your stinky yarn in an airtight container with, like I said, I put about a quarter cup, which is three to four tablespoons of baking soda or bicarbonate soda, whatever, into a sealed container with the yarn. I shook it around kind of like shake and bake. It's shake and bake and I helped. And then I stuck it in the freezer and it's been 23 hours and I smell like really, really nothing. No odors. Oh, wow. Yes. This is my cake I'm going to start with. And the one that I had in the freezer and the one that I didn't have in the freezer are getting, the one is going to get baking soda in it and thrown in the freezer. And the other one is going to get thrown into the freezer. It already has baking soda. Me, real quick, I was editing this and I realized I said I was going to take the one that was just baking soda that, um, that still had the little bit of odor in it and I wanted to see what happened after a week that I was going to throw that back. I was going to throw that into the freezer to remove the odor. No, I'm not. I want to leave it room temperature like it was with just the baking soda because I still want to find out if plain baking soda in a sealed container just sitting out on your counter or whatever for a week will work as well as throwing it in the freezer. So we'll know by next Tuesday. I'll put that blurb in next Tuesday. So sorry guys, I was just cutting in real quick to, so when you see this, you don't go, oh, she threw it in the freezer. No, I'm not gonna do that, okay? And then I'm gonna leave this one out and see if any odors come back to it after I like, I could smell baking soda. <laughs> after I pound it all out and everything. And I will see like overnight if any of the smells come back, but I don't smell anything. I don't smell smoke. It smells like nothing. It smells to me like absolutely nothing. I love it. Not even deep in the middle. A little, yeah, wait, 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 way inside. Maybe if you could get a little bit of baking soda down in there, but barely. Very, very, very faint. Yes, yes, baking soda in a sealed container, in the freezer for 23 hours, took the stink away. And I hope it keeps it away now, I'm excited. So there you go guys, that is my experiment and these are my conclusions. So there you go. If you wanna give it a try, that's my tip for you. If you have stinky yarn and you can't stand the smell of it for whatever reason it may be, and this was stinky, musty, smoky, old smoke odor that was making me gag. Baking soda, I like I said, approximately a quarter cup. I sealed it up and I threw it in the freezer and it was in there for 24 hours, you know, whatever. And there is, I am absolutely happy with this, absolutely. So give it a try, let me know. Let me know other things that you guys have tried. Um, what works best for you? Have you ever put it out in the sun or put vinegar on it and did all that stuff? I mean, I'm talking about not hanging it up and washing. We know that that will work. I'm talking about if you want to leave it in its original form because you don't want to mess with all that and you just want to get rid of factory odors, whatever, plasticky odors, whatever smells that are on it, household odors that are just bothering you, give it a shot. Tell me what you think. I hope this video helps. I hope it gives you guys something to try out yourself. And I'd appreciate you guys letting me know what you think about the video. So if you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. I am here every Tuesday uh, for some kind of tip or tutorial, uh, tip, trick, or tutorial, sorry. And I'm here on Fridays for my regular podcast. Um, 
Thank you guys for everything. You guys are a wonderful blessing and I appreciate you all. And I will be seeing you guys real soon. Have a great day and stay safe, everybody. Bye. Oh, I got baking soda up my nose. I'll have to go blow my nose. And I taste baking soda. <laughs> the one I do for the name of science. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Here's another tip. Before you go sticking your nose in it and sniffing it, I should have done this, but I wanted to show you guys right away. Go take it outside and pound it out really good. And if you have to, take a vacuum to it a little bit because, oh, my nose is burning. <laughs> okay, guys. The salt taste, too, is like, <gasps> have a good one, guys. That's another tip. Don't sniff it with baking soda all over it. Bye. <laughs>